So those task scenarios uh, we need to replace with data driven. So I just want to put particular scenario. Okay, so I want to inject transactional thing. This is how I will do it. Or I want to inject particular version of Kafka. Yeah, we know some of the software will fail with this version of Kafka and will be uh, working fine with another version of Kafka. So how we can test this and find which version will work or which version is not? And uh, slow test. That's probably one of the uh, biggest problem what the people don't want to use any sophisticated tools for integration tests. They, they prefer to use either mocks or some sort of um, stripped down implementation that doesn't have anything. For example, embedded Kafka doesn't have anything except like a runsense process. And, um, but someone needs to prepare this for you. So it's good that uh, we had embedded Kafka for a while. Uh, but the problem here, not that embedded Kafka is something that uh, might not be available on another system that you're using. There's maybe no embedded Mongo. But the problem is small, uh, it's a, a slow test. That's why we didn't want to start real, a real system um, uh, in order to run slow test. Or we need to have some uh, manual uh, configuration. Uh, but in this case, we can use parallelization. And parallelization, not necessarily within kind of like a threads and processes inside one computer. Or maybe we can run this in distributed environment with the multiple uh, node cluster. All right. So test containers. How many of you heard about test containers before uh, you came to my talk? Uh, OK, so like what I'm doing here. So I don't know. How many of you have seen my uh, Kafka Summit London talk? Nice. OK, so I still can reuse some of the jokes from there. Um, so essentially, test containers, it's the, it's the open source library. It's Apache V2 license. Um, it was uh, mentioned multiple times in the ThoughtWorks, um, um, ThoughtWorks uh, radar in, uh, in the section of the languages framework. So, um, and it is in adopt section, meaning that uh, it's good enough for ThoughtWorks consultants to use this. So meaning good enough for the people all over the world to use it and start adopting this. So idea is to have programmable, lightweight, and disposable containers inside your application so you can uh, be productive with your tests. And specifically, when you need to code some of the complex environments, like Kafka, for example, we have still we might have a Zookeeper dependency, or we want to test against uh, the Kafka Connect. So in this case, we need to have uh, Zookeeper, Kafka, Kafka Connect, also, maybe we want to use uh, schema registry into the mix, so we need to also have Zookeeper, Kafka, schema registry, connect. So for all these things, um, have ability so you can code these things, or even better, if you're using Groovy, you can even script this stuff. So um, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, with this, um, with this, uh, um, uh, promotion from the, from the ThoughtWorks radar, um, I want to bring to attention that right now there's a ton of different modules available uh, based on publicly available containers. Uh, here we see Kafka, we see Pulsar, we see Red Panda, we see ClickHouse, we see all sorts of database. So let's see some code before, uh, before we jump like a very, very, very deep. So in um, I will be showing the, some of the things that uh, uh, I started developing when I was at Confluent, and after that, one of the colleagues at Confluent, uh, Christoph, um, also come up with uh, some of the implementations we join forces, and this is now inside this um, test containers, all things Kafka uh, repository, so everything would be there. If it's not there, I need to push it after, after, the, uh, after the show. So um, I'll start with a very simple, a uh, very simple uh, piece of code. And specifically, so everything that I will be talking about uh, will be uh, going around of this, um, uh, we call it CP test container factory. So this, uh, this class will be able to create Kafka for you. It will be able to create a Confluent server for you. It will be able to create all the things, uh, scheme registry, connect, and all this kind of thing. So there's a plenty of different uh, methods that are available here. As you can see here, Kafka Confluent Server, Kafka Connect, um, Confluent Server Connect, Replicator. So pretty much all the things that are available in, um, in the Confluent platform available within this, um, within this like, small, uh, small class. One of the use cases that I want to bring this um, right now um, is how to use this. 
So specifically, this is what the test I want to uh, I want to check. If uh, have a sm smoke test, if the, uh, the the application is works. So this test will create a container uh, which uh, I specified a tag. With tag, I can specify the version of the of the of the system. And uh, after that, I will be waiting until I will see that Kafka is up and running, meaning that uh, smoke test is passed. So this is very simple, very basic example of the smoke test. And the way how it works right now, so if I will run this, what you're going to see is that um, it will start a container. And the, 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 this, this stuff is actually works pretty fast, simply because I already have a, a container, uh, the image downloaded to my, to my computer. Uh, I run this a few times, so it, it works fine, and it's the only thing that it does, just wait until it starts. Another thing, important thing uh, to mention about uh, this particular machine and this particular image, um, until recently, uh, there were no, um, uh, no native ARM64 based images available, so I won't be able to run this. Um, on this computer, and also startup time is is, is really um, is really nice because it runs this without emulation. It doesn't require to uh, Docker to work hard in order to um, transply this uh, x86 into ARM64. So this is nice. This is cool. However, if I will try to do something. Um, uh, I will try to run some some other version here. Um, most likely it's going to fail uh, simply because or we're gonna wait very long time, simply because we're on the conference Wi-Fi and to download all these versions, um, it's gonna be tough. So I will do this one small trick and I will explain about this small trick right um, in a few, a few moments. Um, so right now I have a parameterized test where I will feed this with multiple versions of, um, multiple versions of Kafka. So I'll go, go ahead here and just click here. So what this uh, JUnit uh, parameterized test uh, uh, annotation will do, it basically unroll all these uh, tests that I have and run the smoke test against, um, against all these kind of things. So right now, you, what you will see when we're pulling these images, this image is actually not pulling on my computer because we will not be able to finish the stock if I need to pull these images. So these images are notoriously big. It's a couple a gigabyte of or something like that. If I will just do... Um, a image, for example, uh, inspect. So if I will just do something like this. So one, the, the image itself has, uh, you know, 800 megabytes of Kafka. So, um, but now um, I'm running this test against multiple versions. So in this case, I don't have a Docker Compose. I don't need to template, template it out. I know that the framework itself, like JUnit framework, already has the capabilities for me to provide this uh, parameterized test. And all my tests that I will be running, uh, all my tests, or, or like if I'm writing some software that I need sure that it runs against multiple versions. For example, I'm developing some sort of connector. I need to make sure that it will be running against multiple version of Kafka and it will work. So in this case, I can run this in the parameterized test. So um, it will take it a few, uh, few minutes to, to run this. Uh, while it's running, I will show you another project. So another project has it called a, a CP test container examples. So, we do have a bunch of different um, uh, example tests that run using the, this library. So the, some of the uh, connectors tests are the examples with some, some other connector of uh, some other implementation of Kafka. We're going to get back to this one. Um, and um, inside, uh, inside these containers, we also have a section about uh, integration tests. Um, all these uh, components that I'm showing um, that using CP test um, uh, container factory, um, we have a coverage for testing, for example, KSQL DB. So let's see how we can do this with uh, more or less complex, uh, complex setup. So with, um, in order to uh, these containers to talk to each other, they need to join the same network, uh, Docker network. So, um, and test containers allows us to do this using the, uh, the programmatic way. So I create a new network and I'm creating a, uh, my Kafka container that will be uh, connected to this network. Next thing is that um, 
I'm just simply uh, passing uh, Kafka container around. So um, for a uh, KSQL DB container, I will get uh, whatever I need. And the next thing that I want to check if the health check is uh, um, uh, the, the, the system is uh, healthy and whatnot. So let me uh, let me run this one. And the cool thing that I don't need to worry about the port um, uh, port conflicts and things like that. that the, those tests can be run um, independently right now and uh, executing these things. So. Um, while it's running, let's see if we have uh, another one. Uh, four? No. Where's my run test? Uh, and we're going into the, yeah. So it's executed tests. All the tests are green, so that's, um, that's huge success. Um, and the cool thing is I just did this on stage. Uh, it nothing break. I think it's a... It's a, it's a plus, no? Just, yeah, I'll try to keep you entertained because there's gonna be party in the, in the few hours. We need you alive at the party because there's the rock band, there will be some food, so let's, um, let's keep moving. So that's the kind of like introduction. So let's see uh, what else, uh, what else uh, can be done. So what if you don't have a Docker? So how many of you recently purchased license for Docker desktop? Few people. I was wondering, so what other people are doing? It's fine. So there's a, uh, some of the implementations available uh, that you can use for free. Uh, the personally, uh, my personal favorite is not mentioned here. Um, need to update this. So there is a project called uh, Kalima. Kalima. Um, it's um, uh, naming is hard. I don't know. Maybe it's a meaning. Uh, it has some some meaning to author. But uh, for me, I'm originally from Russia and. Uh, Kalima, it's not a pleasant place because they, during Soviet times, there was a gulag there, so they're sending people there. So Kalima, nice tool, name is terrible. So um, the, in different implementations available, um, but what if you can run your test in the cloud? So you should saw the glimpse of the thing that I'm gonna be uh, talking to you a little bit about. And I use this thing all the time because I'm speaking um, uh, at the conferences, Wi-Fi is maybe not stable. I'm, uh, I'm doing my talks, or like I'm building my talks in airplanes, uh, trains, and automobiles. Um, uh, hotel Wi-Fi is also terrible, so I want to have somewhere where I can download these gigabytes of images somewhere, and it would be fast. So, and uh, this is where I'm using this uh, thing called um, test, containers, uh, test Containers Cloud. So I, I mentioned this like a small utility that I'm running right now. Um, uh, on top of the uh, on top of the everything, and right now um, I don't know if you see this, but um, uh, right now my computer is actually connected to. Um, you don't see it here because it's uh, very blurry. I don't know. Um, yeah, so the one is, is is a little bit better. But essentially, my computer is connected to a cloud instance, and the way how it works, uh, Docker itself, like uh, as a, as a system, is actually separated into things. It's separated between Docker client and Docker daemon, Docker server. And uh, every time when you type Docker, you're actually running Docker client, and uh, Docker client communicates uh, to uh, Docker daemon through certain protocol um, that's gRPC based and things like that. But this is not what we were interested in. We're interested in that we can, in our library, if I run this somewhere here, I see that when I run this locally, it will say like a version of Docker daemon server but now it runs in the cloud. Um, to show you how it looks like from perspective of Docker, it has a, a list. So there's a bunch of different uh, contexts available for me to use in, uh, in, my, um, um, in my Docker instance. So I can switch between uh, Docker uh, Linux, that will be, have a local communication through the Unix socket, to this uh, IP address, 37 blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, this is where uh, my, my communication is actually going to those local hosts. And this local, local, uh, local host application, actually this uh, tiny uh, fellow that sits in my um, uh, menu bar, um, and uh, 
it, it captures all the communication. Every time when I start my test with, uh, with test containers, it's actually executing the commands that are supposed to be local will be executed somewhere in the cloud. Downloads happen in the cloud. Um, the um, uh, test runs will happen in the cloud, and only my machine will get the result. Um, it works the same if you want to do this in uh, CI, uh, in the, um, on your CI system. You just need to figure out, uh, specify how to you know, run this uh, daemon that will be listening to those ports. And uh, that will be, um, that will be ab you will be able to run all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight uh, tests, and they will be running in, on a very fast internet. So it will download the images and execute the test in three minutes. So multiple versions of Kafka in three minutes. Um, that's, the, uh, that's the test container cloud. Now, um, yes, so the, everything is started with this. Uh, it's deprecated, this module is deprecated. Uh, and um, so just here for reference. Um, if you want to start playing around with this, just grab this, um, uh, grab this library. I posted this library in, uh, there's an instruction how you can use in your code. Um, it's, um, the jars are available, so you can use this in, um, uh, uh, in any Java project. Uh, there's a bunch of examples that also you want to try to use. Okay, one more thing. Now, if I would get, get back to this uh, um, uh, ThoughtWorks radar, um, at some point, there was a very interesting point that uh, we got to uh, address. So Kafka API without Kafka. So that's very interesting uh, thing because Kafka API is a relatively simple uh, RPC type of protocol that, um, believe me or not, implemented by many other systems. Uh, Kafka protocol support implemented in Pulsar. Uh, there's a Kafka on Pulsar. Uh, there is a alternative implementation of Kafka called uh, Red Panda. Uh, some of the cloud systems expose Kafka protocol. Very similar way how many uh, distributed databases this day embraces the Postgres as a kind of default uh, the NGDBC uh, the communication protocol or like uh, the Postgres uh, protocol to, to talk this. Many streaming systems also have this, right? So um, how, we gonna, how we can use this in, uh, uh, how we can use this in, uh, in this setting? And in, uh, in this example, actually uh, previously I had uh, uh, let's see if my, uh, yeah, KSQL DB also failed, but it's okay, right? So it's a, it's a failed because of what? Uh, header part received no bytes. Um, okay, so my test that uses scheme registry at connect uh, is failed. And the reason for that, I can explain. So with, um, with the way, how, the way how it's configured, uh, we need to ship some configuration into Connect. For this, there's an API that allows me to uh, ship the files from the local file system into the running container. It works flawlessly, perfectly when you do this local because the Docker uh, daemon has access to this file. Um, uh, it works not so mm, perfect when, uh, when you have a Docker daemon runs on the different computers, specifically in the cloud. So that's why some of my tests are failing uh, when I run this. For example, I need to kind of like uh, put this file um, a, slightly, a slightly different way. I think the, the folks at the test containers in the Atomic Jar, they are aware about this and they're working on the improving this uh, experience, but uh, that's, that's, that's the reason why it, it failed, because it uses some of the local files that needs to be shipped into this um, instance. But apart from that, uh, you can use the custom images uh, with the tests, and uh, as you can see, KSQL DB server responds with some answer. Now, moving back to, uh, to the topic of alternative implementations. Now, in my, um, in my previous example, when I did this like uh, half a year ago, I, um, I, I, I wrote this uh, test, uh, test container implementation for Red Panda, which is an uh, implementation of this. And the cool thing about this uh, Red Panda, let me actually you know, stop the cloud for now. Uh, I can run this locally again, and the test how it looks like this. Yeah, so I implemented this container a while ago, it was there, but uh, since, 
literally today. Uh, this thing now is a part of official Docker, uh, official uh, test containers Red Panda module. So I don't need to have my own implementation. So what I'm using just, um, where is it? Where's my, yeah, the Red Panda container. Um, and um, test exactly the same. I'm using Kafka, uh, producer and consumer API. I'm not using any um, Red Panda clients uh, directly. So I'm just talking to normal, um, uh, normal Kafka producer and consumer. And and it's done. Few seconds. Uh, super fast. Startup time is fast. More importantly, size. Where is it? Um, size for this image, just 300 megabytes. Three times smaller than previous version. And also, it doesn't require the keeper because by default, uh, Red Panda doesn't require the keeper. So. That's pretty cool. And why it's important, why it's cool, you can test your, your applications against different implementation by simply writing the parameterized test where you can put the different containers for your application. That's, that, I think that's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty cool that you can do it. Plus, you know, kudos to, uh, to ones who are implementing this uh, compatibility tests and uh, integration, making things like uh, all these alternative solutions as a, for us as developers, just like no brainer to switch. Um, and the cool thing about just in general, if you think about this, so we are moving into the cloud world and we're running our workloads in the cloud. Confluent Cloud is awesome. Um, and, uh, but you sometimes operating in a disconnected uh, environment when you do uh, tests and uh, you're writing your code. Like I said, I do write the code in the trains, uh, planes, uh, automobiles. Um, and uh, not always have access to, um, to this. But having the, the Docker Compose running uh, on my computer, I can easily um, uh, modify and switch back and forth. Speaking about that, um, yeah, that's basically, you know, the development with boring uh, the, the bash scripts and writing containers and writing this in Java. Uh, some inspirational quotes from the Alec Baldwin from the uh, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. How many of you have seen this movie? How many of you work with salespeople? If you work with salespeople, this is the mandatory kind of like a training, how to work with salespeople. Um, uh, the cookies are for closers. Um, one more thing, another more thing. So uh, speaking about developing, uh, developing applications. So. Um, um, I, uh, I like uh, developing applications against the cloud. Everything is, is working there. It's nice and, and cool. Um, and the tests are also nice. But uh, before I write my tests, I need to write my code as well. And uh, needs to make sure that my application that works uh, the way how I wanted it to work. So um, just this morning, just this morning, I was, uh, I was in the morning session with uh, Josh Long, and he's showing some of the cool stuff with Spring Boot. I love Spring Boot, and I, I, all my projects in Java are using Spring Boot. Um, and uh, what, he, uh, what he showed, he, he also struggled with Docker Compose. He said, oh, I'm starting my Docker Compose. And I was thinking, OK, uh, I think this is a good idea to show at my talk. So that's why I just went and uh, implemented this a few, few, uh, few moments before. Uh, this presentation. So it might break, but it won't. I'm a professional here. So a um, few, like last year, I wrote this um, uh, course at the developer.confluent.io about Spring. So I was thinking, okay, so that was solely designed to be, and all these configurations were solely designed to be used with Confluent Cloud, and all examples are using Confluent Cloud, which is cool. But what if I want to do this, you know, without Confluent Cloud? So, um, so I took, took the, co the source code from this, uh, from this course that I developed, and uh, I was uh, thinking to, what if I will do something like this? I want to start my application. I want to make sure before my Spring code will be running, it also will run all the containers that my application is using. For this application, I'm using uh, uh, the schema registry because I'm using Avro and I'm using uh, Kafka. Um, since uh, Confluent has ARM images, it would be relatively fast on my computer. So, so and I, I went and implemented this um, this uh, new cool thing that available in. Um, so before your application starts in Spring Boot, you, you have an ability to hook into, into initialization process and um, overwrite some of the um, 
um, some of the parameters. Specifically, with my application, for example, the cloud, I have this parameter called a Spring Kafka properties dot bootstrap servers. This is how I will be um, injecting the, um, the, the Kafka bootstrap servers, all the security parameters. So during application startup, I actually can I'm not going to create any, I, I know you can create a profile, but in this case, I need to know the port uh, during the runtime, and I need to make sure this port also doesn't have a conflict. Just much easier to do something like this. In my initializer, I just take, create a container for Kafka, creating a container for scheme registry, um, specifying a particular tag, creating these two things, and after that, Inside this uh, get properties, this is a, a interface that I need to implement because it implements a application context initializer uh, for from Spring. I need to overwrite two things. It will get me Kafka Bootstrap server with randomized port, and it gives me Scheme Registry URL. Um, and this application is fairly simple because it's an application from the first part where I'm introducing a uh, Kafka uh, template to uh, publish messages to, uh, to, um, to Kafka. And I have a consumer that uses Kafka Listener. So, do you think this will work? How many of you think this will work? Anyone? No? Uh, tough crowd, yeah. So, what happens is this right now? Application starting up test containers, initialize the, the uh, uh, Kafka for me, and now I have a, like an infinite, uh, infinite loop, the uh, infinite producer, it has an infinite consumer. Isn't that impressive? I think it's pretty cool, no? So essentially, just, just having this as, as a part of source code, it's because it's a Java library, it's just another dependency. Only thing that you need to do is just to share this code with your colleagues, no Docker Compose files, nothing. So you can, you can just say, hey, you have a Docker or Docker-like thing installed in your computer. Actually, you know, let's, I feel a little bit adventurous right now. Um, so let's, let's try to do this. Uh, uh, th this stopped. Um, this is stopped. Let's see if we actually can do this. Um, Docker PS, so right now it runs the, oh, as you can see here, when I run this for the first time, I see some of the leftovers. However, there's a small fella called a, a Ruik. So this container is responsible for cleaning up. So this is the special container that will be responsible and uh, listening the, uh, the containers that's running. So first time I run this, after I stop my JVM, so this container checked, everything is, uh, is in check, and after that, Docker PS, it's just like, it's gone. So now let's kill the, um, where's my Docker? Uh, let's kill Docker and uh, use alternative implementation. Well, that's, that's why I hate this thing. Every time, every time. No, I love Docker, but uh, I hate when they do in this one. This is like a grow hacking stuff that is uh, counterproductive. Developers hate this. So uh, quit Docker Compose. Let's run Docker, uh, Docker PS. Okay, so it's not running, so I'll just do uh, Kalima status. It's also not running. Let's do start. So alternative implementation. Um, um, wait for a few seconds until this um, will be up and running. Starting up, starting up, starting up. And... Um, Few more seconds, hopefully. Oh, well, <laughs> the moment I wanted to uh, switch to talk about something, it, okay, so uh, status, oops, oops, status, here we go. So it's up and running, uh, runs natively. Let's see if this stuff will work. Uh, with test containers. Um, so I will go ahead and just do run this again. Um, yeah, it doesn't. So I think you need to submit the, uh, um, submit the, um, the pull request or like uh, issue so to support this one. So it doesn't, but it, it's okay. Uh, so we'll just do Kalima stop. Uh, I guess we stuck with the uh, Docker desktop for a while. Anyway, so with this, um, 
It's not only for Spring, as a matter of fact. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're using something else, if you're using different uh, the microservices frameworks for Java, um, you will be able to use uh, Quarkus. In Quarkus, they have developer services that uh, already have integration with test containers. Uh, the Micronaut uh, has integration with test containers. The cool thing with, the, uh, with Spring Boot, uh, there's, they, they're working on integrating this as a, as a part of uh, implementation, but right now, it works just fine with this uh, like, uh, context initializer. And, if you're using Spring Boot developer tools with the hot reload of the code, it also works uh, with all this setup. Um, you can actually reuse some of the containers that you run across the test, um, uh, and uh, you can do this with, uh, with Kafka containers, you can do this with uh, any, any other container.